Okay, uh, another artist I want to talk to you about today, I'm kind of catching up on these. I didn't record any over the weekend. Apologies. We're getting it sorted now. Um, I want to talk to you about the life and work of a very influential painter from the 20th century, which is uh, Lois Melu Jones. And uh, she was born in Boston in 1905. She passed away in 1998. Jones leaves an indelible mark on the art world with I mean, a ton of compelling works and a bunch of different styles. So we're going to look at one of her most influential paintings. But if you look her up, she had so many different styles. She explored a lot of different kinds of painting and kinds of work. Um, so she leaves us this rich history of a, a very prolific career where she experimented a lot and made many compelling works. Particularly, I would like to look at this one today, which is Le Fetiche. Uh, before we explore this masterpiece, I want to touch upon Joan's educational background as well, because it, it kind of plays a crucial role in shaping her um, artistic vision. So Joan studied at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, um, and later at the Designers Art School in Boston. However, her ambitions led her to seek further education, and she ends up traveling to Paris in the 1930s. This is something we've seen with quite a few of our artists um, in this in this series. She, she goes to Paris in the 1930s and she studies at the prestigious Académie Julien. And um, she also goes to Académie uh, Calarossi. So this international exposure broadens her artistic horizons um, and influences her work with a bunch of diverse influences and in, in kind of seeing what's going on, what's cutting edge in the art world, which in the 1930s, a lot of that was happening in Paris. Um, okay, so let's look at this painting, Le Fetiche, uh, which means the fetishes. It was painted in 1938, and it encapsulates Jones's exploration of African culture and heritage, a theme that resonates throughout much of her oeuvre. In this painting, we see a vibrant depiction of African masks arranged against a backdrop of bold geometric patterns. The masks rendered here with a very meticulous detail and, and kind of a rich use of glazing, layering in that oil paint to create that kind of rich um, depth of color. They exude this sort of sense of like mystique and power. What makes Le Fetiche truly remarkable is not just the visual appeal, but the deeper narrative it conveys. At a time when African art was often marginalized and dismissed as primitive uh, by Western critics, Jones's painting served as a powerful rebuttal. Um, through her art, she sought to challenge prevailing stereotypes uh, and, and kind of celebrate the richness and complexity of African culture and its influence on the modern art world of her time. Um, if you think about early Pablo Picasso, if you think about some of his early kind of pre-Cubist works, he was super influenced with African masks, but doesn't really acknowledge that um, in the same kind of way that Jones does. Um, so I, I like the way she really explores this thematically in a more respectful way, kind of paying an homage to this rich uh, history of art making. Jones's significance extends beyond her artistic prowess. As a pioneering African-American artist, she shattered um, barriers and paved the way for future generations. Her work inspired countless artists, but also plays a pivotal role in the broader struggle for racial equality and recognition, um, particularly in the arts. Louise, uh, oh, excuse me, Louis Melou Jones Le Fetiche stands as a testament to her artistic vision and cultural significance. Um, through this painting and others like it, she not only showcased her immense talent, but also challenged the status quo and championed the dignity and beauty of African heritage. And really, like I said, the way she incorporates the African mask in this work is powerful in and of itself, but titling it Le Fetiche is really kind of throwing back this idea of othering, this idea of fetishizing African culture and instead of um, truly honoring it and acknowledging its greater influence in the development of important modernist movements like Cubism. So she's really um, subverting and making commentary on the um, lack of recognition and, and the lack of kind of creative um, authority that is taken from African art at this time by white predominantly male European artists and, and is saying, okay, you can fetishize this, uh, you can, you can uh, discard this, you can take literal African fetish 
uh, figures and use them as an influence in your work, but you need to give credit where credit is due. Okay. Um, and I think it's a powerful piece. I also just as a silly kind of lighter thing, I want to show this picture of her because it's one of my favorite pictures of an artist in their studio of all time. So this is Jones in her studio painting. And you'll notice uh, she was, uh, she had a, a painting assistant here. She had a little studio assistant cat as a cat person and a painter. I'm a big fan of this. Um, but it, it is always fun to kind of get a glimpse inside artist studios. So here she is painting one of her works in her studio with her kitty cat uh, studio assistant.